In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Dear friends, this day we celebrate Trinity Sunday. Tr Trinity being the most fundamental teaching of the Roman Catholic Church, our foundational teaching. Today we offer this Mass for so many families still struggling with the COVID pandemic and for families who have lost loved ones, and also praying very deep prayers for the family of George Floyd, for the repose of his soul, and for peace among this nation, and for healing in the nation, our city certainly, and for the world. We come together as God's family. We stand in the presence of our risen Savior, humbly acknowledging our sins and asking Christ for mercy and strength. I to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your trinity, powerful in majesty, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, the Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people yet pardon our wickedness and sins and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. And blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all for all ages. 
Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, praiseworthy and glorious above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne upon the cherubim, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Lectura de la segunda carta del apóstol San Pablo a los Corintios. Hermanos, estén alegres, trabajen por su perfección, anímense mutuamente, vivan en paz y en armonía. Y el Dios del amor y de la paz estará con ustedes. Salúdense los unos a los otros con el saludo de la paz. Lo saludan todos los fieles. La gracia de nuestro Señor Jesucristo, el amor del Padre y la comunión del Espíritu Santo estén siempre con ustedes. Palabra de Dios. Alabamos, Señor. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, to God who is, who was, and who is to come. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. But whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord, Jesus Lord Jesus Christ. I have in my hand a small box that contains bits of stone and glass, a box that is filled with memories for me and for my family. In 1878, the first members of the Thomas family arrived by covered wagon on the plains of North Central Kansas. Not far from that original homestead, my grandfather and family farmed those fields in Kansas 
until my Uncle Phil's death in 1994. These artifacts were taken from the sod foundation of my family's first homestead, dating back 122 years. As a young man, I stood with my dad and my uncle out in the wheat fields of Kansas. And there, I listened to them time and again relate powerful and moving stories about the Thomas household struggling to eke out a living on the unforgiving plains of northern Kansas. I learned of the hardships and the uncertainties that each year my grandfather and my great-grandfather and my great-great-grandfather endured at the dawn of every single planting season. I was fascinated as they described the harrowing experiences of the Dust Bowl days and the Great Depression, along with accounts of lost crops felled by hail and storms and swarms of locust and those periodic cycles of devastating drought. I was moved beyond measure by their accounts of fear and trembling as the ascent of the Ku Klux Klan happened in Kansas intimidating Catholics and Jews and bedeviling the small black population that had settled in Kansas just after the great civil war. Yet more than those memories of struggle and adversity, I was touched by our family's perennial optimism, undying tenacity, and how they lived with that blessed assurance that things will be better tomorrow. The backdrop for their hope, clear and simple. Look no further than the faith of my grandfather, my uncle, and my dear dad, who relied on their deep Catholic faith to see them through these dark days. My visits to Kansas helped me understand why my parents taught us from the time of our birth, that providence will see us through, come what may. That God's love and light are always greater than all the adversity and the darkness the world can ever muster. The small box of stones and glass symbolized for me my connection to a faith-filled family their enduring fidelity, perseverance, and hope, all rooted in the love of God and our deep fidelity to Christ and the church he founded, a church my family loves so dearly. Today, and throughout the Universal Church, we celebrate the Feast of the Most Holy Trinity, a feast that focuses on the unshakable foundation that serves as the bedrock of our Catholic faith. From the times of the Apostolic Church, the Fathers recognized the mystery of the Trinity as the very core of our identity as God's holy people. The Trinity is the central mystery of the Catholic faith and life and the most fundamental and essential teaching in all of the hierarchy of truths held by the Catholic faith. It is a mystery entirely unknowable by us by reason, but revealed through the teachings of the Lord Jesus and the words found in sacred scripture and ancient tradition. Paul's letter to the Corinthians say in few sentences, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The substance, the foundation, and the bedrock of who we are. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, Abba, a term of endearment and deep familial love. It is precisely here that we find the church's most hallowed conviction 
that all of us, with no exception, are children of God, fashioned in his image as unique, treasured, and unrepeatable gifts of God. In these troubled times, we are consoled by the knowledge that God is near. In the words of Augustine, interior intimo meo, God is closer to us than we are to ourselves. We acknowledge him as the origin of everything visible and invisible, but also a loving father who will never leave his children neglected or alone. On this feast, the most holy trinity, we can pray with confidence the words of Francis de Sales, so salient in these troubled days. Francis wrote, do not fear what will happen tomorrow. The same loving God who cares for you today will care for you tomorrow and every day. Either he will shield you from suffering or give you the unfailing strength you need to bear it. Be at peace then and put aside all your anxious thoughts and imaginings. As we contemplate the second person of the Blessed Trinity, we hear the words of John that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. We turn to the face of Jesus, the name above every other name, and from his own lips, we hear his command that guides our every step as a lamp for our feet. As the Father has loved me, so I love you. Live on in that love. I recall the words of C.S. Lewis when he wrote, if you want a religion to make you feel really comfortable, I don't recommend Christianity because accompanying Jesus' mandate to love one another is his constant admonition that we must also forgive one another. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus insisted, love your enemy and pray for those who harm you. In short, the love of Jesus will never allow us to devolve into hopelessness, harm, or hatred. Never. And finally, we contemplate the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Blessed Trinity. And we ask the Holy Spirit, now we beg the Holy Spirit, to keep our hearts peaceful and steady, faith-filled and confident that God will see us through these difficult days. The preface of the Mass of Reconciliation is a testimony to the power of the Holy Spirit, ever active in the world. The preface says, and I quote, in the midst of conflict and division, we know it is you who turn our minds to thoughts of peace. Your spirit changes our hearts. Enemies begin to speak to one another. Those who are estranged join hands in friendship and nations seek the way of peace together. Your spirit is at work when understanding puts an end to strife, when hatred is quenched by mercy and vengeance gives way to forgiveness. For this, we should never cease to praise and thank you. This is the way of the Holy Spirit. This is what we hope for and pray for and long for. Come, Holy Spirit, enkindle in our hearts the fire of your love. We are living in times of uncertainty and duress, where violence has reared its ugly head and the curse of COVID has left a long and dreaded shadow in our lives. Of this, we can be certain. God is good. God is present. God is love. And that love far surpasses all the hardships we will face now and into the future. We stand on a firm 
foundation. Rock solid, strong, enduring, and impenetrable. On this holy day, the feast of the most holy trinity, we can say with one voice, with one heart, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever, world without end. Amen. Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, amen. We are confident that God will hear our every prayer and so in the name of the Trinity, we pray for one another and for the needs of the entire church. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Bishop George Leo, for our priests and religious, for all faith leaders, that the Holy Spirit continue to guide and strengthen them in ministry. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That each of us may entrust ourselves to Mary, our mother and mother of the church, asking for her intercession with her divine Son. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for our diocese, city, state, and nation, that we continue to move forward with courage and faith in Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For civic leaders, first responders, the medical community, and all those who selflessly serve others, that our loving God give them strength and keep them safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. May each of us be docile to the voice of the Holy Spirit, faithful to the way of Christ, and open to following the will of God in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for the soul of George Floyd and for his family. We plead for the strength and wisdom of the Holy Spirit for an end to violence in the wake of his tragic death. We pray for law enforcement officers. We pray for comfort for all grieving family and friends. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Vera Pepe, for the soul of Deacon Al Padawano, and for the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Gracious God, you have revealed yourself to us with compassion and self-giving love. Hear our prayers that we who are made in your image may work tirelessly to live united in peace with respect and love for all we meet. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. 
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in confessing one true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity and substance, and their equality and majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day as with one voice they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, mere unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with each one of you. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal Holy Trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Let us humbly ask God's blessing. May the Father of mercies bless you in every way and grant you peace all the days of your lives. Amen. May Christ free your hearts from fear and anxiety and strengthen your hearts in his love. Amen. May you walk in his ways knowing what is right and good until you see our Father face to face. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.